Wow, that was a difficult one. Let's see if I got it right. Five out of five correct. Let's go. What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I'm really excited to be doing today's video. We're finally going back to answering UK cat questions or UCAT questions as the test is now called. If you guys don't know, I'm a second year medical student studying at King's College London. And last year on this channel, I did a similar series where I answered UCAT questions live on camera so that I could walk you guys through my thought process and through what it is that I was thinking about while actually doing the questions. This video is brought to you in partnership with Medify, an online UCAT question bank with over 10,000 questions. And I'm gonna be using their question bank for the content and the questions that I'm doing in this video. So abstract reasoning, if you don't know, is the part of the UCAT that's supposed to test your ability to find underlying or hidden patterns in information and shapes. So usually how it works is that they present you with a series of shapes in box A and a series of shapes in box B, and then they present you with a new shape and you have to decide if it belongs in A or if it belongs in B. There are other questions as well, such as completing a series or analogy type questions. So this shape is to this shape, as this shape is to that shape. All right, this isn't making any sense. Let's get into the general tips and then you'll see the questions. So abstract reasoning, general tips. For this section, it's so, so, so important that you do a wide, wide, wide variety of questions. The more questions that you do, the more patterns that you're gonna see and the more types of patterns you're gonna see come up more and more often. The second general tip I wanna say is that for abstract reasoning, you generally have a very short amount of time to be answering these questions. So if you can't figure out the pattern, if you get stuck or if you're confused or whatever, just skip it and come back later. It's not worth wasting time trying to figure out any one pattern. Because the UK cat is marked in positive marking, so you get marks for every question you answer, you want to answer as many questions as possible. Some of those patterns that I'm talking about can be easily broken down into an acronym called SCANS. So S-C-A-N-S. -S. So the S in SCANS stands for SHAPE. And what I mean by shape is take a look at the shapes that are in the boxes. So are they circles? Are they squares? Are they triangles? Um, are they curvy? Are they straight? Do they have right angles? Are they open or closed? Are they irregular? Are they regular? The next part of scans is C. So C stands for color. And for this, you wanna look at, are the shapes shaded a certain way? So are they either black? Are they white? Do they have stripes? Are they cross hatched? You wanna take a look at the color of the shapes. Then in scans, we have A, which stands for arrangement. So are shapes always present in a certain area? So for example, on the left half of the boxes, on the right half, in the bottom, in the top right corner, in the bottom left corner, do arrows point in a certain direction? Are the shapes positioned in a certain way? These are the kinds of things that you wanna take a look at for arrangement. And then for N, you wanna look at number. So is there always a certain number of odd shapes, a certain number of even shapes? Is there always a certain number of circles or triangles or squares? Also, there could be a total number of shapes within a single box or something like that. And then lastly, in scans, there's the second S, which stands for size. And that might be able to give you a clue as to the underlying pattern. Last thing I wanna say for general tips is if you take a look at a set of shapes and you think it's really, really confusing, start off by looking at the most simple box first. That simple box is going to have to follow the same rule as all the other more difficult and complex boxes. So starting off with the most simple box can usually lead you to finding that pattern. If you guys wanna see more general tips, check out my abstract reasoning video from last summer. And now let's jump straight into answering questions live on camera. All right guys, so I've got Medify's question bank open on my computer. Like I said, today we're starting with abstract reasoning. As I go through these questions, you might want to pause before I go through it and show my reasoning and show what's going on. If you wanna try and figure out the questions on your own and see if we both come up with the same rules. I'm pretty nervous, not gonna lie. <laughs> As you can see, I haven't attempted any of these questions yet this year. Um, so hopefully it all goes well and I don't embarrass myself on camera. Here we go, first question. This shape is to this shape as this shape is to that shape. Okay, so what I wanna do for a question like this is I wanna take a look at one single object, okay? I'm not gonna look at all four of these squares at the same time. I'm gonna start by looking at one of those squares. And all I wanna do is see what happens, what changes when moving from that left shape over here to the right shape over here. So let's focus on the top left one. These two gray boxes here become top and bottom on the right. So it's almost like they've rotated this way or they've moved that way. Let's see if that happens to anything else here. So black and white, it should be white here, black here, which it is, okay. So look, already I've only looked at one of the four squares and I already know what the pattern is. I don't, I'm not gonna look at anything else. I don't care about anything else. I know what the pattern is, so let me figure out what this answer is going to be. So if I know, for example, that these top two shapes, let's look at this because it's more simple. So these top two black ones are going to get rotated like this. So I know that in my answer, 
the upper rightmost um, box is going to have two black shapes, one on the top and one on the bottom. So let's look at the answers. Oh, and they, <laughs> they know that I know that too. So this answer, this answer, and this answer all have the, the two blacks in the top right corner. So I know it's either A, B, or C, I'm gonna eliminate D. So now I have to look at something else that changes in order to distinguish these three different answers. These two gray ones here, they now need to move to the bottom here in my answer. So, oh, just kidding, they don't rotate like that. Let's see what happens here. Oh, okay, interesting. So, so now in looking at the answers, I've discovered another rule. So in the top left box here, we said that those two gray shaded ones rotate like this, but in the bottom here, let's take a look at these two gray ones, they rotate anti-clockwise. So the bottom row rotates anti-clockwise and the top row rotates clockwise. So let's see if this rotates clockwise here um, for the three answers. So it doesn't do that here. So this cross and this white square needs to rotate clockwise and be like this, which is present here, it is present here, but it's not present here. So we can eliminate C as well. So now we know it's between A and B. Let's look at the bottom row. Um, so here we know this needs to rotate anti-clockwise now. So these two gray ones need to be on the top um, in our final answer, which is only present in A. One correct, let's go. First question, got it right. We started with these two gray things here. Those get rotated. Then when we looked at the answers, we realized that something else has to be going on because I couldn't choose one of those three answers. So we went back and we saw that the bottom bottom two squares were getting rotated anti-clockwise. Boom, let's go on to question number two. Right. Another analogy question. So this is to this as this is to that. So what's going on here? Pac-Man, circle, Pac-Man, triangle, Pac-Man, diamond. Okay. So I'm assuming depending on where this right angle is, it's gonna make a different shape, I'm assuming. So, okay, so, nice, I got it. So these two shapes are black and the cutout has come from the right half of the circle. These three shapes are white and the cutout has come from the left half of the circle. So this is from the right half here and this is also from the right half. So, so this shape, this shape and this shape in our answer have to be black. So this fits that description and this also fits that description. So B and D. Let's take a look at these two shapes. They're cut out from the left half, so they need to be white in our final shape, which fits the description here, but does not fit the description here. So I think B is the answer. Correct, okay. All right, next question. Which figure completes the series? So again, in this shape, in each of these boxes, we have three shapes. So let's just focus on one shape at a time. Let's focus on this arrow. It goes from facing right to down to left to up. So now we know it's gonna to have to face right. So let's see which of these faces right. Nope, yes, yes, yes. So we know that it's either B, C, or D. Now let's look at this white circle. It goes from black to white to black to white. So let's look here, we know it needs to be black. So white, so nope, black, black. So we know it's either C or D. And then we have this gray arrow on the bottom, left, right, left, right, left. So we know the answer has to be C. This is an example of a very simple question that through very systematic reasoning and logical reasoning, you can come to a good conclusion. So like we said, instead of looking at this in one go and getting confused, you take one shape at a time and see what changes and you move on. Okay, so this is our first set A, set B question. Okay, so when I'm presented with this question, okay, what, is, what are the first things that I'm looking at? First of all, both set A and set B are all colored black. So I'm just gonna forget about color for a little bit. The second thing that I'm gonna do is quickly count the shapes. So I see that there's two here, two here, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So any ideas that I had about odd or even total numbers of shapes are, have gone out of the window because there's two here, three here, five here. So that's out of the way. What else can I notice in here? These guys kind of make a face. This also makes a face, but that's probably just to distract me. I'm kind of thinking that over here, the shapes on top have more sides than the shapes on the bottom. Um, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Whereas here, the shapes on the bottom have more sides than the shapes on the top. Not this one. This one would fit that description. This one would also fit that description. And this one would fit that description. So I know that there's something wrong. I know that I don't have the pattern 100% down. Otherwise, it would be easy to choose one of these options. So let's take a look at this one. This should be easier to do. The shape with the most should be at the bottom and moving up. So I would choose this one here. So this has five sides, four sides, one side. Set B, um, we want the one with the most at the bottom. So it would be this here. Set A, the one at the top should have the most number of sides. So this one here, let's see if I got this one right or wrong. Okay, nice. So I actually got four out of five. This is a good lesson. So even if you're not 100% sure of the pattern, even if you think you have at least one of the rules. So sometimes in a pattern, there's one rule, two rules, and then if they're really mean, they'll put three rules in a pattern. 
So if you're not 100% sure, if you feel like your rule works most of the time, but not all of the time, it means that you probably have at least part of the rule correct. And so as you can see, even with just part of the rule, I still managed to score four out of five correct. So if I scroll down here, I can see the reasoning. So this is what I'm talking about. I had figured out the rule that the shape with the greatest number of sides is the topmost shape, and that managed to score me four out of five points for this question. The second rule was if there are two or more triangles, a circle appears. That is super complex, that is going to be super difficult to notice. So it's something that I personally wouldn't waste my time on. If you have a rule and you know it works most of the time, just go for it because you don't have a lot of time to answer these questions. So just make sure you find the rule and you start answering. Boom, 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 boom. Even if you score four out of five, that's good, that's great. It's better than wasting time trying to find all the different rules and trying to score five out of five because you can use that same time on easier questions that are gonna appear later on in the test. Circles and triangles. Great, and here we also have circles and triangles. So let's talk about number two, 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 four. Three, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. Damn it, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, this could still be a rule. I can still say in set B, there are either three or six uh, circles and triangles, whereas in set A, there's either two and four. Okay, so we can say multiples of two in set A, multiples of three in set B. So this is gonna belong to A, next. This is gonna to belong to A, next, because it's four. This is two, four, six, so that's gonna be B. This is three, so that's gonna be B. And don't forget, there's also a neither. Oh, that would have helped me in the first one that we did. The, that first thing that I got wrong when I got four out of five, it was probably neither. I forgot about that. So yeah, this is set A. Let's see what went wrong. The number of triangles equates to the number of circles, and set B is doubling the number of triangles equates to the number of circles. If you find a rule that you think is too simple, kind of like this one, I should have known. If the rule is a bit too simple, then it might be the case that there's another rule going on. But having said that, we did this question very quickly and we still scored three out of five. It's not the end of the world. It's actually not a bad thing at all. Next question. Let's just get an overview of what's going on here. Okay, two black, two white, two black, two white, two black, two white, two black, two white, one black, one white. So they're equal here. This is four black, two white, four black, two black. Okay, cool. I figured out that in set A, there's an equal number of black and white shapes, uh, circles, whereas in set B, there's only one color. Which of the following test shapes belongs in set B? So it needs to be all one color, not this, this could be it, not this, and not this. Okay, so we know that it must be B. Which of the following test shapes belongs in A? So this could be the case, this could be the case, and this could be the case. So now we know that there's at least something missing to our rule. What else can I see? There's never black, um, there's never black and black on the same half vertically. So here we can see on the right half, there's black and white, there's black and white, there's black and white. So here I'm gonna look for something. So these are on opposite sides, black and white, which is never the case. This is on the same side, so no, this is, this is it. Yeah, so here you can see that on the left half of this man, there's one white circle, one black, which is the same here. On the left half, there's always one white, one black, one white, one black. So now I know that there's a second part to the rule that I'd missed before, but it's okay, I've caught on to it. Whereas here, it's always on opposite sides, same color, you see, right half, white circle, left half white circle. And same here, left half black circle, right half black circle. So let's keep that in mind moving forward. Let's check A actually to see that we got that right. Well, it can only be this one here anyway, because they all have to be the same color within one picture in set B. Which of the following test shapes belongs in set B? Um, so remember they have to be opposite sides and same color. So it could be this, cannot be this, cannot be this. Which of the following test shapes belongs in set B? Um, so again, we need to have opposite sides of the thing, same color. See, this can get really confusing. It helps if you write some of these things down. So it's not gonna be either of these because they're lopsided. Here on the left half, there's three circles. Here on the right half, there's three circles. So it's not gonna be that one. Another one, which of the following test shapes belongs in set A? Set A, um, it was opposite color. So not this, not this, can be this and can be that. Yeah, so not this one, it has to be C. Five out of five, correct. Not gonna lie, that was really tricky. Um, let me click on them just so we can see what exactly the thing was. 
So in set A, a black eye means there is a white circle on one of the limbs on the same side of the body. What I figured out is the exact same thing as this, except I had it in a much more simple layman's terms way that allowed me to identify the shapes quickly. So you don't have to come up with this perfect wording over here or the perfect way like a black eye means there's a white circle on the limbs on the same side of the body. However you can think about it, like for example, for me, I just split the shape into left and right vertically. And I said opposite colors, I said top down colors, however it works for you. If you find a pattern and if you find a way to distinguish what's going on, stick with it. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna cut off this video here. So this is gonna be part one of answering abstract reasoning questions live on camera. I'm gonna be posting part two in a couple of days. So make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel so that you're notified as soon as that one goes live. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you wanna see more content from me about my daily life as a medical student and a researcher. Leave me a comment down below letting me know how you found this video and anything that you want me to improve for the next one. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.